So welcome back to a really uh, impromptu to the chat cab. I know Max and I just released an episode this weekend, but I figured we should, you know, do kind of a quick follow up with some news that is fresh, like barely like an hour or two hours old. So welcome back, Max, for this impromptu chat cave. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, I'm I'm always down to uh, to, to get into the chat cave with you, but uh, you know, it's a uh, it's a uh, unfortunate happenstance but you know the silver lining is the, you know the dynamic duo is back together again so yes. <laughs> you know, some some wrongs will be righted mm-hmm. some stuff will be talked about and uh you know good things yeah so uh this i just was made aware of literally about an hour ago and i wanted to talk about it a little bit here if i couldn't wait is that uh Martin Pascal passed away at the age of 65 today. And for a lot of you out there probably wondering, like, who is that? Well, it just so happens he was a story editor and a series writer for a little show that Max and I hold in very close to our hearts and in high regard, Batman the Animated Series. So uh, he uh, apparently, according to uh, Alan, I think it's Alan Burnett, uh, informed people they passed away due to natural causes so it wasn't related to this pandemic or anything like that and he he was 65 but I just wanted to kind of go over this because as I was looking back into his like career and stuff I discovered a lot of cool things I felt it was important to maybe acknowledge and celebrate the influence he had not just with Batman the animated series but with comics overall and tv series overall as well uh, were you at all aware of who Martin Pascal was before this, Max? Uh, no, unfortunately, and you know, like that kind of makes me sad because uh, you know, like I, I don't get to give the guy uh, his credit, you know, like to his face or whatever. But um, no, man, like any any of the writers on Batman the animated series, I don't care if you wrote the worst episode of Batman the animated series, you're still held in high regard as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, yeah, and then you know he, he's also done a whole bunch of other stuff that I I love. I never knew he you know he had touched on, but you know it's like that's that's how you find out who Paul Dini is. You know that's how you find out who these other guys are. It's mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's you know it, it's unfortunate that he passed, but uh, yeah, I mean he's just an awesome dude. Like I mean that's that's just super cool. My Mask of the Phantasm he worked on. Um, that one wasn't always my favorite Batman movie, but like you cannot deny the quality of it. Mm-hmm. um so yeah like it's it's just yeah it's a lot of cool stuff and uh he's he's a real yeah there's a really awesome career yeah and like i was saying he he's he's very much hold held sway over a bunch of different ips throughout throughout his career again not just in uh tv but in comics as well that's where he got his start was in comics in the 70s he uh actually i guess according to something i was able to pick up on here his like first pretty big gig was one of his first pretty big gig gigs was for writing for an issue of vampirella back in the early 70s <laughs> okay <laughs> she ended up uh kind of uh crediting erroneously like crediting the writing credit to uh his friend and who also was like his like benefactor Doug Monk Monk who Doug Monk is not only someone who's written for Batman before he wrote the uh Batman Dracula Red Rain series of uh stories where Batman fights Dracula and Batman becomes a vampire <laughs> but also uh Doug Monk created a lot of characters he created Moon Knight and uh Deathlock and Black Mask so uh oh, was already there so I, there's, there's a lot of people on the Moon Knight bandwagon like I'm just not a Moon Knight fan <laughs> And it was like, oh, he's Marvel's Batman. He's, he's, he's. I'm like, no, he's just not. It's, it's, he's not half as interesting. He's not even a quarter as cool. Oh, sorry. I'm not a hot topic. I'm not a Moon Knight fan. <laughs> well, before, yeah, I, I know we're talking kind of like the poor man's Batman over at Marvel here. But apparently, <laughs> like, uh, 
uh, Pascal didn't get started with Batman at all. He started with like Superman over at DC in uh, 73 or 73 or 74. He was writing like backup features for Superman and then eventually like got to work on uh, other features for like the Atom and then also uh, Jimmy Olsen and Supergirl stuff. And then eventually like got to work on a, like a comic strip called The World's Greatest Superheroes, which uh, starred Superman, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, The Flash, and everything like that. He was instrumental in like revamping Dr. Fate in 1975, apparently. All right. Um, and uh, was kind of uh, instrumental in bringing that character out of the golden age and into contemporary times uh, and added the spirit of, or added the concept of the spirit of Nabu being in control in the helmet and so forth and you know taking over whoever would put it on so that was really interesting to find out that he's pretty much the one you credit when it comes to what we think of when we see dr fate and say like young justice or um any sh uh the original like animated universe stuff so yeah, I mean, like they didn't in uh, Justice League Unlimited. Doctor Fate got a little bit of you know, you know, he was there, but he never really got in depth. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, they didn't go into like the spirit of that or anything. Like, you know, Young Justice goes at it hardcore, and uh, yeah, no, that that's super cool. I, again, like that's just another just awesome thing. Um, you you were mentioning in our previous chat, you know, about properties we want to see adapted into those direct to video animated features. And uh, you, you mentioned Swamp Thing, Alan Moore Swamp Thing. His run actually preceded Alan Moore on there. He, he was the one who started Saga of the Swamp Thing. Okay. And then he left ish, on issue 19 and then Alan Moore took over the book. So it's like, okay, huh. there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, we, uh, yeah, we just did a, um, uh, on another podcast, we've got uh, 3Geeks.Ninja. Check us out for all kinds of super awesome podcasts uh, called Monthly Pull. Uh, we did some some Swamp Thing issues, but of course, like, that was Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. Like, maybe we need to dip into a little bit, you know, just ahead of that, just to see mm -hmm. uh, what he had going on. That's that's super cool. Yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting, like, how it plays. that uh, He, I, I guess, had, you know, he was able to make such strong associations with other industry professionals who would hold sway over a lot of the way we perceive certain characters and heroes to this day. Like without him, there is no Alan Moore Swamp Thing technically, you know, if you consider it that way. Like I'm sure Alan Moore would have found another path or who knows, maybe if Alan Moore had started on that particular line, it would have been just as memorable, but without him starting the book, absolutely you wouldn't get Alan Moore's run on there. You wouldn't get uh, a lot of these superhero concepts probably you know, if you didn't cross paths with Monk, you would probably wouldn't get Monk's further involvement with DC and Batman and all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's just super cool. And then, <laughs> uh, also, you know, it's like DC has uh, just a bunch of, like, and, you know, we were talking about again on a previous episode, check us out, um, <laughs> to the chat here with uh, Max and Mike, um, <laughs> Mike with QTV, YouTube.com. Uh, but if, we were just talking about like the the rich tapestry of like the characters that DC has, and then, like now you can tell why. Like when they had you know had guys like this working, like you said, like he got to do the Star Girl and, and other things before mm -hmm. he was doing anything. You know, like we consider you know influential with any of the big superheroes. But it's like maybe the other stuff is the good stuff because you know they get to take a character and kind of do whatever they want with it because nobody cares about what they're doing. So, yeah, yeah, he's like kind of handed down the 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 misfit toys so to speak the island of <laughs> toys of dc superheroes and it's like make make something of them so he did it's like yeah, yeah. and and that's that's super cool so you know i did that's again it's a very awesome just you know weird little career like it's like and then i was doing this and then i was doing that <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, for a lot of, he, and he stayed with DC. Uh, I mean, he would write occasionally for Marvel, I guess. Uh, he wrote for like the licensed series uh, for the Gargoyles. You know, remember Gargoyles from Disney Afternoon? Like the Marvel had a licensed comic book for a while in the mid 90s and he wrote for that. But All right. also, um, for, uh, uh, up until like the mid 2000s, he served as uh, DC's liaison with Warner Brothers Studios. 
uh, wherein his whole job was to vet scripts, scripts for the animation programs, um, and also the feature film division and other other brands. <sighs> so he was he was kind of vital in, uh, and it, it'd be an interesting job to have. He was vital in kind of being sort of a consultant regarding DC continuity. So you know. We taught. We had an earlier episode too. Again, coming back to our own podcast, not tooting our own horns, but we have talked about this before. <laughs> uh, but check it out. Check that game. My we, TV. Yeah, talk. exactly. Where we were talking about like reasons probably why Batman villains or Batman characters couldn't show up in Justice League, or why Aquaman suddenly disappeared at a certain point in the series. That responsibility fell to him to balance out, I guess, you know, continuity for film, TV, cartoons, and everything like that probably so he was basically given access to like archives and supplied comics and issues that would help the story writers and you know editors and so forth come up with their own brand that was very quintessentially dc he helped develop like smallville when it was first starting off in birds of prey and oh, what a I, know, I know you have i know you have opinions <laughs> on those series very much so. i mean you know that's why I take back half of the good things I said about this guy. <laughs> well, we haven't even gotten into his TV uh, and animation stuff yet. I think that'll more than make up for, you know, oh, yeah, no, Birds it, of Prey or and Smallville. Or you know, like for for as much as I hate Smallville, at least it kept people in it. You know, like mm -hmm. it it did it did what it had to do. It's not the hero that we wanted, but it's the hero. We got at the time. And also, you know, you could, you could probably thank him for the reason why it did hold as close as it did to what a lot of fans consider to be DC continuity, you know, Ugh. would have been way less Superman involved probably. And just imagine what that series would have been like. Smallville, Kansas is the center of the universe. <laughs> and everything's just six hour drive from, <laughs> yep. from that town. Um, so it's just a geographical lobby. Two weeks from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so he also wrote for a lot of live action stuff apparently he was a story editor and writer on book rogers in the 25th century uh fantasy island the twilight zone in the the 80s revival of the twilight zone max headroom okay and, and roseanne he wrote on rose the original roseanne okay so okay. <laughs> Jason will be very happy to hear that <laughs> <laughs> for real oh my goodness no that's that's incredible and then we get into animation. And this is where, obviously, our focus will lie, probably. Because he started off with, like, Thundar the Barbarian. Nice. Uh, he also did work for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay. Uh, Exo Squad, G.I. Joe, My Little right. Pony. Yeah. Um, and, a whole, like, a whole bunch of others there. And one of my personal guilty pleasure series, Bucky O'Hare and the Toad Wars. I don't know that I've seen that. Oh, man. It's got the best. I mean, I say this about a lot of cartoons, but this theme song <laughs> is kind of rocking. <laughs> okay. All right. Look up Bucky O'Hare and the Toad Wars. I got to try to find that somewhere. Oh, you'll like this. He wrote for The Tick, the 1994 The okay. Tick. Okay. So there was that as well. Yep. Big ups. And then, of course, we would be remiss not to talk about batman the animated series there we go obviously you... home run shut the door yeah. like whatever you know, whatever else you've done in your life at least you've done this mm -hmm. uh that's uh yeah i that, this has definitely shaped my whole i like this guy's had an influence on my entire life which i was i can say that because it all like my love for batman like all my my comic book like all of the stuff that came with it was from this like this is the main reason and uh yeah that, that's great i i just obviously yeah. batman the animated series is one of the greatest cartoons so and it's like a serialized cartoon you know it's like it's like made for mass market for children and they just knock it out of the park it's still so watchable and so good and the art is so good and the writing is so good mm -hmm. oh yeah it, i love it i love it i love it i love it i can't say enough good things about it so you know so I'm going to go over his contributions to the animated series here 
because he uh, Batman the Anim- Man- animated series was a huge production obviously and you had a lot of different not just producers and artists coming in but also you know writers would rotate in and out of the series so he was in there for a block from 1992 to 1993 where he was served as a story editor and also uh, wrote a couple of teleplays and wrote one episode solely on his own um but you know like in in just 1992 to 1993 you have a good chunk of the series being produced all at once essentially and they you know remember when they first aired that show they would just release those episodes just on mass there was no like season breaks necessarily <laughs> you just get non-stop new batman all the time so let me yeah, go life over was good oh yeah life, life was, was so good. good but uh let me go over uh these uh particular credits he wrote Feet of Clay parts one, or uh, was editor on Clay Feet of Clay. Yeah, the Clayface origin. He was a story editor on these ones, um, on the two-parter for Clayface's introduction. Uh, edited on The Clock King. Okay. Vendetta, which I, I remember uh, was the introduction of Killer Croc. All right. Vendetta, Vendetta, Vendetta for <laughs> me, papi. That's a completely different uh, show. <laughs> <laughs> refuses to die. That refuses to die. <laughs> oh my goodness! Like uh, I, I haven't watched that other. Like, we're not really talking about it. I haven't watched it in so long. I'm just like waiting to see how long. Uh, so, yeah, like that's uh, amazing and remarkable. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. Sorry. Okay. No. No problem. No problem. Uh, the cape and cowl conspiracy, the one where like you know the guy's trying to trap Batman all the time to just give up his mask and stuff. <laughs> uh, the strange secret of Bruce Wayne, which introduced uh, Hugo Strange. Yep. And had all the villains like auctioning for his secret identity. Uh, Moon of the Wolf, the werewolf one. <laughs> all right. Uh, Terror in the Sky, which was the second, I believe, Man Bad episode. Man Bad, yeah, all right. Uh, if You're So Smart, Why Aren't You Rich, which was the introduction of the Riddler. The Riddler, that is an episode right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, where there, I think that's the one where they're in the maze with the Minotaur, right? That was the yeah. Riddler one. He's, like, trying to get his former, like, partner or something. Uh, yeah, I know. The better one is the second one. Ah. But, uh... He edited "What Is Reality," the virtual reality one. Okay, that was that was That's his. A good one too. Yeah, I like that one too. Uh, yeah, no, this is like <sighs> um, off balance that introduced not just Count Vertigo but also Talia. Yeah, it's who would great. Um, the mechanic, which is the one where you know we find they out take control of the car. Uh, yeah, the Batmobile is yeah who who built the modern Batmobile. Uh, blind as a bat guess what happens there (laughs) uh he goes deaf (laughs) uh see no evil um this is the one he he wrote this one (laughs) (laughs) no this is the one where um he batman fights basically the i believe the uh invisible invisible man who wears that invisibility suit yes is trying to see his daughter. And funny thing about this is that the whole story is that it's this con who has this invisibility suit. So he's committing robberies while being invisible and, you know, gives Batman a run for his money. But also he's trying to take, trying to get his daughter away from his ex wife. And his daughter in that episode is played by Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moss from Mad Men as a little kid. Okay. And she would later grow up to star in, guess what? The Invisible Man from Bloomhouse that just came out. <laughs> so. Yeah. That is a crazy, yeah. I, I would like to, like, you know, if she ever comes to O'Connor or something like that, and I, I get to ask her one, like, one question that's going to throw her off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be, um, so how do you feel that you were in episode 37 of <laughs> Batman the Animated Series <laughs> We played the little girl whose dad was the Invisible Man, and then you were in later. <laughs> the girlfriend when that of the girl Invisible would have Man. Been Thirty-seven. You at thirty-seven played a woman who got visited by the Invisible Man. <laughs> yep. Like strange how you find your way back to certain things. Um, he also edited the stories for uh, the Demons Quest Part One and Two, which introduced Ra's al Ghul. 
And I yep. know that one was written, co-written at least by Denny O'Neill, who originally created Ra's al Ghul. And then his final uh, writing credit in the series was Paging the Crime Doctor. Uh, he did a teleplay for that one. And I believe that's the one where an old surgeon friend of Thomas Wayne is having to do like a heart operation on Boss Thorne. And there's a, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I believe, I believe that's what the, and like Leslie Tompkins has to help is like being held hostage and has to assist him on the surgery and so forth. And the only reason I remember that particular episode I, is because it ends with like a really sweet moment where Bruce Wayne is talking to the surgeon while he's being interrogated by the police and Bruce Wayne just wants to know about his dad. And so it, the episode ends with them just talking about his dad. So it's like, pretty sweet yeah that's cool no nah, I mean, that's that's so cool <laughs> i wish i could have worked on batman anime series well then his coup de gras i mean he won emmys or he won an emmy for his work on this and he w took part in co-writing of course mask of the phantasm and i know you mentioned like you, you it's not necessarily your all-time favorite batman but it is a good batman film i feel really yeah yeah, for sure. I mean, like, it's got it's got everything you need. I I don't know why when I the, the it's it's the, one of those things like from your childhood that you like never get over. Like when I watched it when I was a kid, for some reason I didn't really like it, and I've never been able to like get over that. Like it's like locked into my brain or something. So like, but I do like recognize that it's like I have watched it again since then. I was like, well, this isn't as bad as I. I like, I don't know why I didn't didn't like it but whatever it didn't sit well with me for some reason when i was seven so <laughs> that's that's just how things go but no it's a, it's a quality it's so good like it's a quality movie it's just a great batman story and uh yeah it, it definitely you know it was definitely one, all the accolades that it got aside from aside from like the burton films which were the only films at that time i was really aware of uh, aside from adam west of course like adam west. it was the first one that made me more interested in the organized crime aspect of Batman's world. Like I used to remember like being very impatient uh, watching the Burton films and being like, when are we going to get to Joker? This, this gangster stuff is boring. When are we going to get to like Penguin and Catwoman? This, this Christopher Walken guy's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a Shrek. But I remember watching Phantasm and being like, I am really enthralled and invested as to what this crime story is. That's got like, you know, Abe Vigoda as this, this gangster who, <laughs> who the Joker owes a favor to because the Joker used to be his gun, gunman and stuff like that. Like how it just really got into the characters and grounded them in something a little bit more real than super villainy. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and I, I think that's maybe like what I, what I, didn't like as a kid, you know, it was like, oh, I want everything to just be flashy. It's super villains. Like, it's like, oh, this is all Batman's like old love and, and then all these like, you know, other things. And, you know, the movie came out in the theaters. You know, like, that, that's, that's something. You know, like, it, it, <laughs> when you think about that, it, it's, it's, it's really, really good. Like, I, I absolutely dig this movie, even though like I've got some weird thing where I don't really dig it, but I, well, because I, I I think there's a lot of validity, validity to what you're saying with regards to it depends on when you saw it and how old you were. It's like when we're young, when we're little kids, we're not really invested in like, you know, organized crime stories and tales of revenge. Like we're there to see <laughs> the Batman be Batman and do heroic things. Like it's only later that we can like look back and appreciate like, oh, wow, that was actually a serious character driven like drama taking place in that. Yeah. Movie. Oh, yeah. Like when you compare that movie to like sub the Sub-Zero one. You know, or or a couple of the others, like like those are all okay, but those are more like you know longer versions of just like a random episode, you know, yeah. of the show. Like yeah. the Mask of the Phantasm, like while using that, the, you know, the same animation style as as Batman the Animated Series, like was not like you didn't find that in in Batman the Animated Series. Like it was a step up from that. So like it it it, it definitely is a, a cut above the you know like it's it's a, a great. That's a great movie. Yeah. And he was part of the team. He helped make it happen. So I feel, I felt we just had to kind of say our piece on that. And I figured, you know, I, I was kind of blown away a little bit, like actually just how much this guy 
was in my childhood, so to speak, with regards to all these shows and all these comics. Like, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like this for guy sure. was more involved than I would have ever guessed. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's amazing. And then like, even like as we're, you know, going through, going through the list right now and I'm just like, wow, wow. Like, and then it's like, there's always some weird like other thing. And you're like, you know, like, where did you get the job for that? Like, you know, who did you talk to to get the job for that? <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, it's a uh, it's a story career to you know be very punny. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not gonna want an Emmy. Yep, you won an Emmy. It was like ridiculous. And that's the thing is like the, during this time when you thought something that would be in any other time period considered a trifle, like a Batman cartoon. Batman cartoons won Emmys. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, how, that's awesome. Little, Let's just throw some, and you know, when you make quality stuff, you win Emmys. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. you know, out there, DC Animation, right now, you know, guys, uh, when you uh, when you take the time and you spend the money in the right ways, you uh, you win Emmys. I'm just saying, you used to do that, you don't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, what you gonna do? It's the modern market where everything needs to be a shared universe. I, I guess I guess all the good guys are, are dead. You know, like <laughs> this is the last guy. I, I, I know, like hopefully Paul D. Like, hey. Good yeah, help. you still you still uh, got a lot of great writers out there, and yeah, it was. Uh, out. But uh, <laughs> you know, like, just make a good thing. Just, like, look, this guy did it like his whole career. Like, <laughs> yep, just, just make a good thing. But I I don't know, man. Uh, this has been a a rough kind of couple of days with Little Richard and then Jerry Stiller, and then, but this one hit me a little bit harder than those other two. Like I love little Richard. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I love his music and stuff. And we wouldn't have kind of the modern setup of rock and roll without him. And I love Jerry Stiller. I've been rewatching Seinfeld clips, you know, in my, during my break time and stuff like that. The guy was a tremendous comedic talent, but yeah, this Jerry one, Stiller's hilarious. but this one, when I said, when I read about this just a couple hours ago, I was just like, whew, man, that one hits home. Because the animated yeah. series is right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's right there in the childhood. That's like, like right, right there in the warm fuzzies. It's, it's, it's. Uh, you know, it sucks. It sucks. People, people die. You know, it happens. But uh, you know, that's part of life. And then we got to go on. But like, you no, know, this guy had a. I mean, if if you got to have a run, he had a fucking good run. Like that's <laughs> that. You know that that is is saying something. So absolutely. You know, like more power to him condolences to his family and friends sure. you know it's uh again it's a sad time but you guys can you know do like we're doing like mike said we're, we're celebrating this dude's career and his life um he did so many awesome things like it, it definitely deserved the podcast definitely deserved you know the shout out mike i'm glad you reached out and i'm glad i got there like just in the nick of time <laughs> yeah uh, i was get on the cast for those not to know, because I, I wasn't able to save the previous recording, I was in the middle of doing my intro on my own because I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to get Max this late at night. And then as I was starting my intro, just being like, well, I reached out at Max, but I understand if it's hard to get a hold of people this late at night. And then all of a sudden, broom, hey, when, now? I'm like, <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, let me set that up. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, glad it worked out. There. And, uh, yeah, no, because it would have been, been something to have to listen to this podcast. I'm definitely glad I got to be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. And I like what you said earlier. It's like, we got to keep moving on. But you know what? We've got a legacy of great work that this guy leaves behind for us. I'm going to watch Mask of the Phantasm before I go to bed tonight. I'm uh, definitely going to watch like three of those episodes of Batman and the Series, <laughs> which I bought like for the fifth time on a different medium. Like, I, not only, I watched it when it aired. I have bought videotapes. I bought DVDs. I bought Blu-rays. I, 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 I bought uh, the... the um, the DC streaming service just so I could watch it. So I've watched, <laughs> I bought it over five different mediums. Yeah. That is how much I love this thing. <laughs> there you go. See DC, see, you've got a vehement and loyal fan here. I mean, I give out the money. All right. Like when it's good, you get my money. Like that's, a, that's what I'm saying. You know, like just DC, you had my money, you lost it, but you, 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 it was a lock. You had my money on lock. You lost it you get it back i'm not saying those days are over you know but like you gotta you gotta get back to your roots is this your is this your godfather part three moment where he's like just when i think i'm out bring me back in 
I mean, I hope they pull me back in. I want them to. And I, I'm over here, like, just do what I know you can do. You know, it's like, I know you're better than this. Like, you know, you, it's not like a parent, like, child thing where he's like, yeah, I see all the potential. And, like, if he would just apply himself. Like, <laughs> but I don't, I don't feel like a, you know, a parental, like, feeling. But, but it is like, it's more like a, a teacher or a guidance oh. counselor where he's like, Man, this kid would be awesome if he would just pull his head out of his ass. Man, no wonder you want to beat up kids. <laughs> for, for the reference on that, please check out 3geeks.ninja and the latest episode of the 3 Geeks podcast. Max, because, it's not just the latest episode. There's a, it's a running there's theme. A bunch of them. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm glad this worked out, man. Thanks for being available for just this kind of brief reflection on the contributions of this guy and uh rest in peace uh martin pascal and all the best for the family and so forth as they go through this difficult time all the best to all of you out there as we continue through our collective difficult time here and but i promise max and i will be here to provide some laughs and some content along the way so uh i can't think of a hypothetical question to ask you about this right the, off the top of my head right now. So, uh, again, just throw out your uh, contact stuff, the, uh, the website. All right, yeah. So yeah, you can, you can find us at the uh, three geeks podcast on, uh, on anything pretty much uh, Twitter, iTunes, uh, a- Apple, Stitcher. We're on uh, all- anchor on, uh, we're on all kinds of different stuff and pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast, you can find us um yeah the, you can find us on our website three geeks dot ninja it's the most awesome website on the internet because we're at dot ninja who else is there um but uh yeah i i i got some ideas that we're gonna do for this website but uh like, check us out we got all of our podcasts on there um we're improving the stuff now you know just because obviously we got time so <laughs> Yep. um things things are gonna gonna be better coming out of this so i'm excited about that but you know check us out um you can find this uh we got some stuff on t public you yes. got some uh t-shirts yeah or you can, you can get we got some designs on there you can get it on all kinds of stuff um they got all different options and sizes uh i got i got the chat cave shirt myself um i gotta tell you like the quality of it is pretty solid um i don't know if i upgraded i might have got the upgraded shirt or something but Possibly. it's definitely worth it if you do because uh like you know it, it had, i've had it for a while now and it hasn't come apart it's still very uh, vibrant red and uh, you can still read all of the stuff on there so um yeah definitely go check us out too public they got good stuff over there um i know mike's also got some of his stuff on there um mm-hmm. for his own tea public so check all that stuff out yep and yeah that's all i got and of course, you've been listening to the chat cave here on McGTV. Again, youtube.com slash Mike McGTV or follow me on Twitter at Mike McGTV. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. I hate doing all that stuff on here because that's what <laughs> says, but I might as well I mean, say like, it now. You know, we should just, do we it. Should just not say it, you know, because like they, if they're going to do it, like they're going to do it. Like, if I, you haven't done it yet, do it now. Just, you know, just because like, this, this podcast is awesome and yeah. uh, you should definitely give it the like. But, you know, if no pressure no pressure though so there you have it thank you everybody have a good night and uh same chat time same chat channel i think gtv